don't wanna sleep in Cause I got something to prove I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move I think of you and all the shit you don't do Well I'ma make hella shit sure that I don't become you I have no regrets, yeah I'll tie up my chest I'll never forget what it's like to be in debt Been stabbed in the back, bed. I'll show you what happens Pass me the mic and I'll show you with action I feel this pain, you already know Turn that to gains, let my money show It's alright Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Thanks for being here. I wanted to talk about this this morning because it was relevant. Um, last night we parked somewhere other than the main parking spots where we're kind of allowed to park. And for the most part, it's a bunch of people like me that'll park overnight there and then go do whatever they're doing during the day. But the other group of people just sort of hang out trashy RVs and vehicles like that. So one of the problems for me is by being out here in a van, I'm necessarily grouped with everybody else who's out there. Even if I don't want to interact with certain people and I keep to myself like a lot. So anyway, back to the story from this morning. Last night, we parked on another back road that's an industrial area and really quite empty and I work late so I need to park somewhere where I can sleep in a little bit so in the morning this morning this note was on my car I hope you can see it it says this block is is no overnight parking the city hasn't put up signs yet because of COVID you need to leave immediately and it's who is this from oh I wonder because they they haven't um there's no code on here there's no signature there's no um, who is this coming from? So I don't want to have them call the police on me. But then I was thinking, yeah, go ahead and call the police. Then I can talk to the police as to why they're not enforcing all of these other people in the 72-hour rule. I believe if the police would just enforce the 72-hour rule, that would take care of a lot of these people who just park there and then just live there. Literally put out you know, tarps and extend their RVs and put out chairs and cooking things and they've got their trash. There's a place. We're broken, it's tragic. We're not all elastic, but maybe there's magic. Believe you could have it. And I know of sadness, the anxious and panic, the infinite vastness of all that is blackness. insane. So if the police would enforce the 72 hour rule, people wouldn't be living in one area and they would have to repark and move around. If they would just enforce number two, the litter laws. We do have litter laws for a reason and these people are littering everywhere and it's never enforced. And someone's going to say there's not enough police presence. There's enough police presence. They can take a time to go around that lot and let them know it's a 72 hour rule. Threaten them with a ticket for littering if they don't pick up their stuff and then actually give someone a ticket and then it's like well these people can't pay well then if they can't pay they'll get a citation or a, a warrant for their arrest oh well that's bad yeah well then they'll go into jail oh that's horrible I mean there has to be accountability somewhere otherwise people continue to behave poorly anyway so this morning after this we drove over to go park where we're allowed to park where I haven't been parking because um, it's one of my parking spots, but there's this lady in a car that's been there for months now. And the last time, and it's just disgusting. There's stuff all around her car. And I just don't want to be associated with that. I don't want to look at it. I've already picked up that lot several times. So the other night when we parked there, the other week, I guess, we pull in. It's about two in the morning or so because I work late and I'm exhausted. I'm going to watch my little YouTube and I'm going to go to bed. And all of a sudden this lady comes you know, after we parked, I'm like looking over and she's like walking over and then she's walking around this other RV. And I'm thinking, is she trying to rip off that RV? No, she's trying to watch the RV from me. So she comes over and knocks on my window and I'm like, yes. 
And she's like, what are you doing here? I've never seen you here before. And I kind of went off because that really, it's like, what are you doing here? You're trashing this place. You're never leaving. Anyway, I get really mad about it. And I said, look, you may not have seen me here before, but I can park here if I want. And it's none of your business. And she says, well, I'm watching my friend's RV and I was just kind of worried about you. It's like, okay, it's three in the morning. I parked up here. I could be a mass murderer, murderer. And she's coming up, knocking on my van in the middle of the night isn't she even concerned about her safety no she goes away i go back try and go to sleep it's this lady she's screaming and swearing not at me but at whatever it it tones down it dies down i'm like it's like now 3 30 in the morning and i just decide i can yes we can do this start dozing off again screaming swearing it's crazy it was i think 4 30 or 5 in the morning when I got back up put my glasses opened up the curtains whatever and found somewhere else to park so that's why I didn't park there but after being asked to leave from this from this other very quiet out of the way nobody's even over there spot to this crazy spot um this morning Who's there in the morning? We're broken, it's tragic. We're not all elastic, but maybe there's magic. Believe you could have it. And I know of sadness, the anxious and panic, the infinite vastness of all that is blackness. So what you just saw in that footage is the group that provides showers for all the homeless people. I think it's like once or twice a month they pull up this big rig with showers, which is actually really cool but right in front of that is the needle exchange so there they were giving out their needles and there's um you know a couple of people there who i guess just used right next to the truck and one guy's just laying there i'm reporting on homelessness from a van i'm out here on the streets showing you what's really going on out here how do you say someone who's down and out and so down and out on their luck should have to have accountability. I think it's this accountability is one of the things they're lacking in the first place that got them in the situation they're in in the first place, you know. Um, I don't take any government benefits, though I could very easily in this state. And numerous people, ever since I got back to California, are like, you know, I have all of these benefits I get, like, I don't know, $1,200 a month, $700, $800, $900 a month, and I get $200 in food stamps, and I have free medical care, and I get a voucher um, to go to the second-hand store, I get a voucher for laundry, all kinds of things, and it's like, I could do that right now, and just have boatloads of money, because I live in a van and don't spend money, and I work, oh yeah, I could go right in there and do that right now, the biggest reason why I don't take government benefits that I could easily take. Oh, I could get on disability too, but I'd first have to go into the medical system and have them diagnose me with like four or five or six things. And before I get that disability, I'm going to have to take their pharmaceuticals. I'm going to have to be in the system as someone who has a problem. 20 years from now, when they've decided to get rid of all the people that have a problem, I might be on that list. Five years from now, when they decide to who knows what they'll do with that list. But the main reason I'm not accepting all of these benefits that I could get is because I'm responsible for myself. Because, and I'm not saying that people shouldn't get help, but people have to have some level of accountability for themselves. Otherwise, they have no purpose in life. and They have no personal strength and the joy of you know, being your own man, being your own woman. And that's, that's a big part of what all of these people are missing and why their feelings are down and out in the first place. So just to throw, you know, things at them and just give them things and never ask them to be accountable, I don't think is helping. So I really believe in that for myself. And I really believe that I'm an able-bodied woman and I should be able to earn enough to make it. I should at least do everything I can to try and make it. I believe that if I take too much help from others, that I will step more into my codependency, which is part a big part of the problem out there too, where you get into this cycle where you're, you 
feel like a victim and you feel like you need others to save you. And that's the last thing I want to do. I really feel like a totally capable person with two arms, two legs, a heart, a mind. I'm in like the, one of the richest countries in the world. I mean, there are so many things that you, there are so, so many jobs available because people aren't wanting to work now and there's just endless jobs and there's yard work and there's this and that and the other. And there are ways to be self-determined and that's what's missing here. And a lot of you are going to say that's just not fair, but I coming from a poor family and struggling have seen it from this street side. And so this is what I believe from my perspective. I'm just doing everything I can to not be a burden on the other citizens, to not be a burden on an already um, giant government. And I don't need to um, become more and more dependent. There's a difference between that and coming together with others to help one another and create something. There's a difference between just receiving everything from someone and not contributing anything. So that's essentially why, you know, I don't see myself as homeless, and I know somebody out there is going to say that. And I don't see myself as needing benefits from the state because I'm a fully capable person and I'm going to keep working and keep trying and keep spreading the love and the information. A lot of the people out here have so lost their way. They have no sense of themselves, the accountability, the fact that, you know, there's so many good men out there that have just turned to bad men that have, that, you know, to be a man and not be able to to do something in society must be just just awful. These good men have no purpose. It's just so sad and it just brings me so much angst. I mean, I, I feel for all the homeless people, what they've been through. And at the same time, I'm absolutely frustrated with the giving up that I see out there and the sort of having been enabled to give up. And then to because they're not accountable and haven't been accountable for so long, they just spread their stuff everywhere. It's very difficult. I have very mixed emotions about it. But I can tell you one thing. It's very hard to live in a van and to be in the same areas as, as, as some people that I feel that just don't have the same values that I do. There's a mental um, health crisis and there's a drug addiction problem. There are a few homeless people out there that are just down and out, but I couldn't imagine that you would be homeless for very long if you're a type of person who works and believes you have the ability to pull yourself up. There's plenty of opportunities to do that. Not that it's easy, but there are opportunities. As you can see now, the lot is clean and clear. Uh, there is one trailer there that I'm guessing isn't staying there for 72 hours. And there were some parkers here last night. That one RV guy has a gym membership here, so he can be here, but he's parked correctly. So yeah, all the junkies are gone and the people living here. It's nice and clean. And we're going to leave too once I get my coffee. All right, I'll be right back. Hi, are you the city manager? Well, my name's Julia. I live in a van. Um, I do work. I have a sewing studio in Eureka, and I make clothes and sell them all over the world online. Oh, wow. So there's that. <laughs> yeah. But I just wanted to, one, thank the city for letting us park overnight in our vehicles. What I mean is not criminalizing it, yeah. not making it really, really hard for us. Um, 
But I also wanted to thank you for enforcing the 72 hour parking rule and other parking rules yeah. because many of the vehicle dwellers will um, take advantage of the situation and right. just live there. Right. So I noticed recently that that had been handled in that way and I don't know what actually happened. I don't park over there very often because it's so crazy mm -hmm. and because I work in Eureka. But I wanted to thank you for that because I know it's hard for some people to move their vehicles or they don't have money or whatever. Right. And the trash and the litter right. and it's really getting out of control. So one, thank you for not criminalizing vehicle dwelling. Right. And thank you, number two, for enforcing the parking so that we don't get out of control and that the city doesn't have a negative impact. And then it comes down more so nobody can ever do it. Right. You know, some of us need to do it. Yeah. I, I, and have you heard of our safe parking program? Uh, no, I haven't. So it's not implemented yet, but the council, oh. the city council did authorize some of our American Rescue Plan Act funds for creating this pilot safe parking program. So you might notice that a lot of the vehicles that used to be at the transit center, the community center, are now... Safe parking one? So that is okay. not in effect yet, <laughs> okay. but the like location got announced, so everyone just kind of like... Okay. <laughs> yeah, and I thought it was good. I was like, why are... So eventually our Fair House Partnership is going to be managing that. And okay. It'll be like a, a process, an application process. And people, right. You know, and it'll, it'll be much more organized and, and efficient. And, and I'm glad that it'll help probably a lot of people that yeah. need somewhere safe. So, yeah. Well, thank you, Julia. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you so much. I love Arcata. Oh, all right. Okay, please do. Thank you. And if an officer or two could be told what a great job they're doing. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, bye. I don't know if you heard, she said there was going to be a new parking program. And that's why all the RVs are parking over there, um, all ganging up over there. But it's going to be... Um, legit and organized and managed uh, for those RVs and those people that just need somewhere to park on a more regular basis. Anyway, put it in the comments down there below. Please like and share this video and I really appreciate you all being here. Have a very productive and wonderful day. Thanks. It's all right. So he's been looking for somebody who could save him Instead of searching inside for what they gave him A strong will, strong mind causes mayhem We could change the world, change times, rearrange them Staying on pace, running the race Life is a chase, I don't want a place I want to be first, work till it hurts Dehydrated thirst till I'm in a hearse Aww. High ambitions in the right mind Can take you so far It's, it's like, like you lived a few lifetimes Take off from a break off from the weak minds They can stay soft, you can change lives, you create thoughts Never waste time, you got one shot You got one life, better pop off What do you like? Make a dream job No 9-5, no mean boss Just my life and free thought